algebra of functions is very easy. There is a sum difference product and quotient of two functions. So suppose we have function f and function g. Let's take a look at the sum. So the sum f plus g of x is equals to f of x plus g of x. So all you have to do is you add two functions together. For the difference, you subtract them. For the product, you multiply them. For the quotient, you divide them f of f of x divided by g of x. So since g of x is in the denominator, you have to specify that g of x cannot be equal to zero. All right. So let's take a look at the first example. We have function f and function g. I want you to write those four functions, the plus, minus, multiply, and divide. So for f plus g, so f of g of x, that is equal to x squared plus 6 plus the square root of x minus a. Of course, you can simplify this a little bit. And then we have x squared plus the square root of x, 6 minus a is equals to negative 2. All right, that is for the sum. And then for the difference, f minus g of x, so that is equals to x squared plus 6 minus square root of x minus a. So let me ask you a question. Did I miss anything important? The answer is yes. You are subtracting the entire function g, right? So you have to use a parenthesis. Otherwise, so maybe I should do this in highlighter to emphasize how important it is. If you don't use the minus, you are going to miss one distribution. So you will just subtract square root of x and then subtract a. But if you use a parenthesis, once you distribute the minus, there is actually a plus a. All right, x squared minus square root of x. So we have 6 plus, right, minus minus. So 6 plus 8, that is equals to 14. So that is for the minus and then for the multiplication, f times g of x. So let's move up a little bit. We have x squared plus 6 and then times the square root of x minus a. So this one to me, it is okay to just live it in factor form, but if the textbook or the you are doing homework online, they ask you to simplify all the way or they ask you to, you know, expand everything, then do it. So you have x squared times x to the one half minus a x squared plus six square root of x and then minus 48. And then how do you take care of the two exponents, the two and the one half? Do you multiply them or you add them? The answer is you add them, right? So that will be a 2 plus 1 half. So this will be 4 over 2 plus 1 half. So you have a 5 over 2. Then this is x 5 over 2 minus ax squared plus 6x square root of x minus 48. So that is the third one. And then the last one is f divided by g. So f over g of x. Then you have x squared plus 6 divided by the square root of x minus a, and then you have to emphasize that x cannot be equal to zero. I mean, um, the square root of x minus a cannot be equal to zero. So this one, uh, what what is what is the x equals to? So square root of x equals to a, and then you square both sides, right? You square both sides, you have x equals to 64. Uh, I cannot use negative 64 because uh, the square for for square root of x, the x must be positive, right? So 6, 64, you take the square root of 64, that gives you an 8, 8 minus 8 is equal to 0. So when you choose an x value, do not pick 64, all right? So let's move on to number 2, the pink one. So we have f plus g of x. That is equals to the square root of x plus 3 and then plus 1 over x divided by 2. This one, uh, if you wish, you can do a common denominator. So for the square root of x plus 3, you can multiply the top and bottom by x minus 2. So this is just a 1. So multiplying that won't change the problem. And then you add 1 over x minus 2. So that looks like that. Let's make it look like a minus. And then you have x minus 2. So the top, then that will be a, that then 
I will just do it, I will just slip it in this form. Square root of x plus 3 times x minus 2 and then plus 1. That's it. To me, in my opinion, I think living in this form is so much cleaner. All right, and then you have f minus g of x. That is equal to the square root of x plus 3 minus 1 over x minus 2. So if you put this in uh, one term, so that would be x minus 2 root x plus 3, x minus 2, then the plus 1 becomes a minus 1. And then you multiply them. f dot g, right, of x, so that is square root of x plus 3, multiply 1 over x minus 2, so you put this on top, and then divide by x minus 2. So this one is a rational function. Rational function means you have a function on top, you have a function on the bottom, so you have to specify x minus 2 cannot be equal to 0, so therefore x cannot be equal to 2. All right? And then the division. So we have f divided by g of x. You have a f this square root divided by not just a one one divided by one half is one over this okay how do you deal with this complex fraction so to deal with this complex fraction let's try something else so let's say we have two divided by one third so that is equals to two divided by a fraction means you multiply the reciprocal which is three over one reciprocal reciprocal means you swap the numerator and the denominator so that is equals to 6. So back to our problem. So this one we have root x plus 3. Multiply reciprocal of the denominator. So therefore you have root x plus 3. Multiply x minus 2 for the quotient. So this one is quotient. The previous one is product. And then this one is difference. And then this one is the sum. Alright, so that is the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful and clear, give me a like, share the video for me, subscribe to my channel if you are on your way out. I will catch you all in the next lesson. Signing out.